Hi, my name is Dr. Robert Preben. I am the creator of the vlog entitled Parks Are Like Icebergs, where I share 30 plus years of parks urban planning experience, along with my recently completed PhD studies looking using institutional theory to look at uh, how parkland decision making occurred in the 1960 to 210 period, <clears throat> excuse me, in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. So uh, today is the first of uh, a new feature I'm introducing into my vlog entitled, and I call them park site chats. So basically I'll be taking a specific park and talking about all you can see and can't see. Uh, in my vlog down below, there's a whole bunch of notes about <clears throat> specific elements around uh, how the site was acquired, how the programming was developed, how the maintenance occurs, um, how security occurs on site. Today's uh, and, and other factors uh, that I think are pertinent to understand, anytime you want to undertake a, part, a planning process, a park planning process or an urban planning process in a park, you need to understand kind of the under, underlying things that have occurred in the past uh, that uh, you, that will inform how you do your public engagement processes and your public engagement outcomes. So today's park is uh, what, not a Canadian park, actually. I, I was recently in Germany and I went to a park called Tempelhof Park. Tempelhof Park um, is, the, is on the site of a former... Um, uh, airport, Tempelhof Flug, uh, that was built by the Nazis in the 1930s. And uh, it was decommissioned as an airport in around 1908 and opened as a park in, tw uh, sorry, 2008 and opened as a park in 2010. Now, what makes this park so interesting is the history and culture of the site and the history and, and how the history and culture of Germany kind of bleeds into what happens on the site. Um, the most interesting things I think are the fact that this this occurred in the late two, in the 2008 to 10 period where a public referendum was held to determine the future of the of the of the space uh there was developers salivating at the opportunity to create these uh new urban forms of development um but the public spoke loudly and clearly and said no no we value this we value this place as a public greeting as a public space it had been uh, parade grounds for for the German soldiers in the early 1900s. It's 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 always been a public space, and they said, "Hey, we want to keep it." And there was a public referendum, and they listened. The, the German government listened. Now, the the most important thing here is they adopted an approach. They called it um, informal in, institutionalization of informality which basically they said, we're going to let the community guide us as to what will happen on this site. And it won't be a heavily programmed site. And they 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 also uh, called the, the community, they, they, they created the uh, process where groups could come together and say, and they called them urban pioneer. What should we do on site? Some of these people were already on site. They had already occupied the site, so to speak, when they airport closed for, you know, just hanging out in the green space, um, just uh, community gardening and whatnot. <clears throat> so that had already been occurring and they said, let's expand this. Uh, and so my, my notes below uh, talk about how this site was uh, acquired, designed, constructed, maintained and programmed with and for and by the community. Uh, this is this picture in the background is actually a picture of a portion of the site that has been left to naturalize. Um, uh, so the, and it's fenced, but you can walk in there kind of thing. There are also on Templehof Park site, three dog parks. There's these massive barbecue areas. The runways were retained. 
Um, there are there are paths and pa there are paved wa uh, walkways. There are there are pa uh, dirt paths. There are concessions. There are public washrooms. Um, there are there are baseball and softball uh, fields. Uh, there are uh, sand volleyball courts. There's a place where they do some music. Uh, there's an opera being held on on the site in uh, this fall. They do special events like they do festivals. <clears throat> there was a kite festival when we were there. It was really a cool site. It's a park site that is bigger than um, is bigger than uh, Central Park in New York, just to give you a sense of the scale. Um, it is it is embedded in an area basically that was um, that that yeah, if if you compare it to Edmonton, so Edmonton has about a million people. The the land area of of the Edmonton city is about three quarters the size of Berlin, but Berlin has 3.85 million people. <clears throat> so it's a highly dense uh, uh, setting where people live in, in smaller accommodations. Uh, they have smaller access to their own personal uh, spaces. They're, they're, where, where they live is smaller. Their units are smaller. There's no, there isn't a whole lot of pri uh, private public space. There is some. Uh, but not a whole lot. Um, so it when this 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 process to save this and keep it as a park began in 2008, about the same time as Edmonton's closure of the municipal airport that ultimately was repurposed as a uh, multi-use, uh, ecologically um, focused uh, development. Um, that development, uh, the, the, the notion of turning it into a park was never considered by the, the elected officials. That it, was, it was always about development, as most things are in Edmonton. And uh, so uh, that site development has been stalled, while as, whereas this site, and I've got some videos in, embedded in here, this site attracts it's been estimated of about 10,000 people a day now that's that's an average in the in the spring summer and fall you know the numbers are huge in the winter it's kind of cold and rainy it's kind of like Vancouver to, uh, from a climate perspective so um the the use ebbs and flows but there's a multitude of sites people come to the park they flood out of their high density development living and use the site. And it's people of different cultures, different ages, different religions. They speak different languages. They have different, um, they're, it's Berlin's very tolerant and accepting of the LGBTQ communities. Um, so uh, it, it it's just a really cool site. And I encourage you to read some of my notes below that tell you in more detail about the stuff you can see and can't see uh, that went on behind the scenes and continues to go behind, on behind the scenes in a, in a German setting. Thanks for listening. And I hope you listen more in the future. Please feel free to uh, subscribe to my vlog and share it with others. I'd like to grow my, my base as much as I can. It's a free vlog. So thanks for listening in. Bye.